Muslim and no, nah, I'm a Christian. Because those are the ways of your oppressor. You didn't know nothing about being a Christian. You didn't know nothing about being a Muslim until you went into captivity by the people who gave you that. That's right. Read it again. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? So the only way we can agree is by this Bible right here. This African fest is a crime. We're supposed to be running this city. We're supposed to be running this country. But why aren't we doing it? One of the things is because we're divided. One of the things is because we're divided. A lot of us don't have the answers. A lot of us is in different religions, different political views. Some of us is in fraternities, sororities. Some of us is in different lifestyles that is opposite of what God says. So we don't have the same mind frame. But God says this read. The book of Hosea, I mean Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt. Because we were the children of Israel that came up out of Egypt. And God says he has a problem with us. That's why there's violence going on in our community. That's why everything is upside down. That's why we can't seem to get ahead as a people. Yeah, there's a few of us that's making a little money. Yeah, there's a few of us that's well off, but the mass majority of us were not. We, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You know what that means? God is racist. God only cares about one particular group of people. And that is you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the children of Israel. Read on. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore what? Therefore, I will punish you. That's why God has got us on punishment. Just think about it. What solution you got to stop the violence in our community? See what I'm saying, man? At some point, we're going to have to come together. Read the next verse. Verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's the only way we're going to walk together, bro, if we agree. That's the only way. It can't be two different ideologies. It can't be, hey, look, I'm a Muslim, and no, nah, I'm a Christian. Because those are the ways of your oppressor. You didn't know nothing about being a Christian. You didn't know nothing about being a Muslim until you went into captivity by the people who gave you that. That's right. Read it again. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can two walk together except they be agreed? So the only way we can agree is by this Bible right here. This Bible, the image of Christ is a black man. The image of Christ, he was never a white man. Because when you go in some of these churches, that's what you see. You see an image of a white man that's in the church. But how can a white man be in the Middle East all those years? So-called Middle East. Read, give me the book of Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, to verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. His head and his hands were white like wool. Christ had woolly hair. Touch your hair, sis. That's woolly hair. So we reveal how Jesus Christ looked. Christ had woolly hair. Read. As white as snow. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. And he had red eyes. Why? Because he drank wine a little bit. Anybody know when you drink wine? Your blood vessels in your eyes pop a little bit and your eyes turn red. Read. And his feet look like a fine bread. And his feet look like bread. Brown bread. So his feet was brown. So if your feet are brown, your whole body is brown. So Christ had woolly hair and brown skin. So why in the churches, why would I look on TV? Why would I Google Jesus? He's white. But the Bible says he's a black man with woolly hair. Guess what, sis? A lot of our people don't even like their woolly hair. You know what they do? They go to the Chinese stores that's making them billions a year getting hair that look like they're oppressive. Hey, when you go down to the Caribbeans like Jamaica, 
A lot of our sisters is bleaching their skin. So our oppressor has taught us to hate ourselves. That's why when we come out here and teach the truth, a lot of y'all don't want to hear it because the truth hurts. Read it again. And his feet, and his feet, look at the burn bread, as if they burn in a furnace. So Christ is a black man. He has woolly hair. Did you know that, sis? Did you know Jesus was a black man? Did you know that, mama? Did you know that sis Jesus is a black man? Read it again. And his feet, look at the burn bread, as if they burn in a furnace. As if they burn in a furnace. So that means he was so dark. He looked at like Wesley Snipes. Christ was so dark, he looked like Wesley Snipes. Hey, how can we stop the virus in our community, bro? You got any solutions? No solutions. How can we stop the virus in our community, sis? How can we stop the virus in our community? Any solutions? Do you have any solutions? What solutions do you have to help us stop the virus in our community, sis? You don't know? Hey, guess what? These kids, they got guns with switches on them. And a lot of them gonna come up to this, this area and some of them might start shooting. We gotta have some type of solutions for our kids. Cause we read out of the Bible, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. That's a solution. We also read in the Bible, don't, don't carry on the ways of the world. Keep the Lord's Sabbath day. Those are some solutions. Because at some point, we gotta teach our kids who they are according to the Bible. Christ is a black man, and we are the children of Israel. That's right. Because if you don't come back to God, guess what? Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. Give me that in Isaiah chapter three, verse 12 again. Because even if you don't wanna hear these words, guess what? You're gonna hear them anyway. Read that. Isaiah chapter three, verse 12. Isaiah chapter three and verse 12. As for my people. Because our people in our communities, our children are oppressing us. They're the ones that's robbing us. It ain't the white man that's doing that. It ain't the white man that's, that's oppressing us and killing us and robbing us. It's our own children. The Bible says what? As for my people, children are their oppressors. And guess what? Some of you grown men are children too. Some of you grown men are children too. Because I asked a lot of y'all, what solutions do you have to help stop the violence in our community? And a lot of y'all just kept walking. That's a childish behavior. Because you don't care until, it, until violence hits your doorsteps. When someone in your family gets killed, then you care. That's when you care. Because when violence hits your doorsteps, then you want to get on TV and talk about stop the violence. How about stop the violence today? How about come give us some solutions so we can go into the community and tell our brothers those solutions that you have? That's right. Read it again. Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. So one of the solutions is marriage. Marriage. A righteous man and a righteous woman coming together raising the kids. Because the Bible just, just told you that single family households is not the answer. Single family households is what raised these kids to be monsters. Because all they want to do is be drill artists and kill each other. Sell dope to one another. Read it again. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. And women rule over these children that is in our community oppressing us. We have to stop that at some point. You hear that, sis? Marriage is what's going to help stop the violence in our community. When you have a righteous man and a righteous woman living together, raising kids, that's what's going to help stop the violence in our community. But as long as we got baby mamas and baby daddies, that's, that's going to perpetuate the violence more and more. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Because here's, here's a law, sis. You was listening. I want you to hear what God says because God cares about how his children look. You're not going to send your children to just look any type of way, are you? 
you're gonna dress your children and look a certain way to represent you. So God has a dress code for his children. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse five. How you doing, mama? Say that again. Our homies people. So what do you suggest we do? In your homes too. You know what? You know here, here's something that we gonna do. I want you to listen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Here's a solution that can help you. I'm gonna. I'm okay. Can I? You already a Christian? Okay. Can I read you something out of the Bible? Here, here I'm gonna show you. Maybe you never heard this before. This is a big Bible. Read. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. The woman shall not wear. That which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says that a woman should not wear that which belongs to a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Meaning cross dress. So let me ask you let me ask you a question, sis. Because our, our, our history, you gonna sit down. Alright, so I'm gonna come over here and walk with you. Come on over here, Mom. I'm gonna come over here and walk with you. Yeah, let, 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 let your sister sit down. I'll praise to the most high. So look, when we got off the, the west, when we came from off the west coast of Africa by the way of slave ships, and they dropped us off, and we started going on these certain plantations, what was the women no, wearing? Okay, I'm gonna I'm show you what the Bible says. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So the Bible is talking about dress code. It's just like your children. When you send them out to go to school, you put them on a certain type of clothes. They got a reference that they can't be dirty. They, they have to be a certain thing, right? So read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So this is the Holy Bible. The Bible says that all that cross dress is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So here's the thing, sis. Right. Right. So here's the thing, sis. What I'm trying to show you is the Bible is a spiritual book. And when you do things, you get a good spirit. When you do what the Bible says, you get a good spirit. When you do it against the Bible, you get a bad spirit. So when you want to go to a washroom and it doesn't have words on it, how do you know which one to go on? It has a silhouette of a man wearing pants and a silhouette of a woman wearing a dress. So that's universal knowledge that a woman is supposed to wear a dress. So God cares about how his children look. He cares about how they're supposed to dress. Don't you care about how your children look? Give me that in... Uh, in uh Mark chapter 7 verse 21. This is what God says about the heart because when it talks about the heart, it's talking about the mind. Your mind, all of our minds is weak. The only thing that's going to cleanse our minds is this Bible. Read that. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So from out of men proceeds evil thoughts. And listen to what these thoughts are. Read. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication, fornications, murders, murders. Now, when you think about adulteries and fornications, a lot of our women that's wearing pants, they wear tight, revealing pants. Guess what happens when you wear tight, revealing pants? Now, someone lusts at that. You know what I'm saying? Guess what happens after that? Fornication. So these thoughts that's in our mind, they start to materialize in the physical, because you think this and now you actually do it. Read. Death. Covetousness. Wickedness. Because all these things go on in mind and then they materialize once you do it. We don't deceit, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, pride, pride. That's, you know what? That's one of the abomin. It's on, it's on the fly, man. It's all on the fly. I come from the city of Chicago. It's on the back. It's on the back of the fly. It's on the back. We Israel United Christ. But, but the church, the church is the people. The act, to, be, to be honest with you, the church is the people, the people of God, the children of Israel. What is the nation?
This shit is family. This shit is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time. Oh, no!